good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Sarkis Kasyan, on the issues of the Armenians of Western Armenia, plays Antonin Ponce, the National Council of Western Armenia commemorates the genocide. Stepan Aker considers Baku's statement that the Artsakh people are calmly passing through the Azerbaijani checkpoint in Hakari to be a complete lie. Publishing House in Western Armenia, the Azerbaijani site has moved moved away from some sections of the Sunik border zone, the national culture of Western Armenia, Dance Papure. Sarkis Kaysian was born in January 1876 in Shushi. His father, Hovan Ester Gasparian, was a teacher and merchant who moved to Baku with his large family. Until 90,000, Sarkis Kaysian studied in Baku and then continued his education in Europe. After graduating from the Institute of Commerce in Leipzig and the Faculty of Philosophy at Berlin University, Kaysian founded the first Armenian Bolshevik newspaper, The Voice of the Worker, in 1996, together with Ludwig Knunyans and Petros Manas. He translated Marx and Engels' Manifesto of the Communist Party and Engels' Principles of Communism from German into Armenian. In Tiflis on Stepan Shahumyan's initiative, he published the Kites and New World newspapers. With Pendarian, he helped publish the Russian periodical Listo Kopeka. In 1914, with Borian and other Tiflis Bolsheviks, he published the weekly Mer Hoska. In 1919, he took part in the illegal September consultation of Armenian Bolshevik organizations and in the first illegal conference. He was head of Soviet Armenia for only a few months. It was during this period in February 1921 that dozens of Armenian personalities and soldiers were massacred in Yerevan prison. In 1920-1913, he held high office within the Interfederation, Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan from 1922 to 1936. He was killed in 1937, becoming one of the victims of Stalin's terror. What do we generally know about the armenology of Hazer, the writing symbols of medieval Armenian music? According to Haracha Ajarian, the word Hazer was borrowed from Caucasian languages and means a line of writing, a record mark, the grow like lines of a pillar or hand, the crack and the end of an arrow, and perhaps the Caucasian languages were borrowed from us. We know that Armenian accent and division signs are largely included in Hazer. Hazer represents a complex system of musical symbols containing three to four additional subsystems. Hazography comprised three independent accent and music systems. The notation was formed as early as the 8th century, and the origin and initial implementation of the idea are associated with the name of Stepanos Sunetsi, although it is possible that it has deeper roots. Grigor Gerzik Arevansi, an 8th century Armenian scholar, singer, performer of spiritual music, was involved in the development of hazography. He worked with Stepanos Sunetsi second, with whom for scientific purposes they went to Athens, study the Bible and its interpretations, and familiarized themselves with the old and new teaching of philosophy. Grigor Gerzik lived as an ascetic for many years in one of the caves near Ayrivang, where he died. A chapel has been built over his grave, considered a miracle worker of Ayrivansi. His creations and works were summarized in later collections called Manrusun Dor Hazgirk, Ananya Narekatsi, Hachatur Taronatsi, Nerzesh Norhali, of Mametopetsi, Grigor Hal, Grigor Haletsi, and others also contributed to the growth and development of calligraphy. It is thought that in the first half of the 19th century, there were still very few people who knew how to read Hazer. Most scientists are against moving the Hazer problem into a spiritual and mystical realm, and consider that it is purely a scientific problem and can be solved. At least theoretically, where is the prospect of a solution? And the fact that so far the Hazer have been partially disappeared is due to the fact that our Armenian and foreign Hazar have not carried out consistent work in this field. We are not talking about the work of a single Hazologist, let's say Komitas, but about the number of generations of Hazologists that we Armenians have raised who have tried to work and discover from the point where the previous one ended to continue and reach the next stage. It has not been studied step by step by several generations of Hazologists. In this field, all our talented and dedicated Hazologists began studying Haz 10 to 50 years independently of each other. 
At the request of the National Council of Western Armenia, Lydia Markosia, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Western Armenia, led a race in place Ponset at 11 a.m. on Monday, April 24. In addition to the duty of remembrance, the minister called for national reconstitution and the application of the International Treaty of Sevra. It was recalled that since 1894, Armenians have been the victims of successive periods of illegal occupation and atrocities, such as those currently being perpetrated by Turkish Azeri armed forces. Forces. Artsakh residents calmly crossed the Azerbaijani checkpoint on the Hakari Bridge. Baku Media broadcast images with this title, in which there are also women and children in the passport control. By the way, this is already the second video. There is a difference. First, there were Azerbaijani men at the checkpoint, now there are women. And this so called checkpoint is unacceptable for the people of Artsakh, and it's not the opinion of one person, not the opinion of two people, it's the opinion of our people in general. Artsakh human rights defender. Geram Stepanian told Radio Azatutyun. The Artsakh Ombudsman stresses that the Baku government wants to appear polite and show that this is exactly what integration is. This is a complete and false lie. And personally, at various meetings and discussions, I always point out that even the fact that people are traveling accompanied by peacekeepers and Red Cross already speaks of the fact that the right to free movement is being impeded, Stepanian said. The images also show the car of Russian peacekeepers transporting the people of Artsakh. Two days ago, they resumed transporting people who urgently need to come to Armenia or return to Artsakh. 28 people were brought to Armenia, 27 were sent back to Artsakh. We think the filming was done at that time. At present, there are 132 Artsakh residents in Goris hotels who are listed and awaiting their turn. After the conquest of Western Armenia, in the process of Turkification and Islamization, the successes and benefits of indigenous nations and peoples of different religious affiliations were either completely ignored or downplayed, and only a few lines were mentioned in official history books. For example, it is thought that printing, one of the most important tools of scientific and cultural life, was first used in the, in the Turkish state in 1719, almost three centuries after Gundenberg's invention. However, our Armenians first used the printing press in the Ottoman Empire in 1567, long before the Turks. The first Armenian newspapers created by Armenian intellectuals were Shtemaran, Patani, Gitelians, Arshaluis, Araratian, and Hayre Nasser, published in Izmir since 1839. According to data presented by Armenian language specialist and historian Barsak Tuglajian, the number of newspapers and magazines published directly in Armenian or Turkish with Armenian characters, which were printed in 131 Armenian printing houses in Constantinople and 61 Armenian printing houses in rural areas in the years 1567 to 1923 reached 598. The fact that the total number of Greek, Armenian and Hebrew newspapers does not reach 10 today is an indicator of how the non-Turkish, non-Muslim population was destroyed as a result of the genocides and deportations that continue to this day. Resisting this storm of destruction and denial, the first bilingual news paper August, published on April 5, 1996, printed in Turkish and Armenian, continues its fight against denial and for freedom and democracy with the same determination. Regardless of the fact that the newspaper's founder, Haran Dink, was killed on January 19, 2007 by fascist bullets. It should be noted that in addition to occupied Western Armenia, countless Armenian newspapers, magazines and books are published mainly in the Republic of Armenia and on all the continents where Armenians in exile live. In some parts of the Sunnic region, the Azerbaijani side has retreated. The governor of the Sunnic region, Robert Rukaisian, said as much in the briefing of the National Assembly, but he was unable to give clear information on specific locations. According to the governor, at the moment demarcation work has not yet begun, so he cannot give any detailed information about the work underway in this direction. Referring to the question about the nature of the engineering works on the Armenian and Azerbaijani sites in the border zone, Rukaisian noted that these are defense engineering works and there can be no question of drawing a border with them. Residents of border settlements often express the need to arm themselves for self-defense. However, according to Hukasian, there is no need to arm a villager. Robert Hukasian also said that at the moment, around 50 families from the Tech community of Sunik are struggling to reach their arable land. According to him, this is hampered by two circumstances. The first is the advance of the Azerbaijani and the second is the deployment of the Armenian army. According to him, residents who do not have access to their areas will receive aid for this year's unreleased income. 
Papuri is a dance with regional variations. Dance throughout one, the plain of Mush, Pitli, Sasun, and much of the Armenian highlands. There are multiple versions of the pronunciation and thus the spelling of the name of this dance. According to Tom Bosikian, its name with M may come from the spoken emphasis while stamping in the dance Pump Pump Pampori. This version of Pampori is a traditional men's dance from the village of Horkom, present day Dilkaya. The dance was originally introduced to the Armenian folk dance society of New York in 1939 by Arshak Muradian, uncle of the famous painter Arshil Gorky. It continues to be danced in mixed lines in Armenian diaspora communities throughout the U.S. and has been added to the repertoire of dance groups in the Republic of Armenia. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> 